microbes is one uh, unit of uh, the syllabus which deals with the microorganisms so microorganisms are those kind of organisms which cannot be seen under the uh, by the help of naked eye so they can be clearly visible only under the microscope so either it may be compound microscope or any other type of microscope so microbes in this us in this part or in this unit which is actually the first unit of the syllabus it includes viruses and bacteria so in microbes we are studying about what are viruses uh, various uh, uh, related aspects of virus and also bacteria now first we shall study about uh, uh, virus now what what is virus or what are the characteristics of virus and how they reproduce and uh, also uh, how the replication in virus takes place and also the economic importance of virus and some common diseases of virus now virus were actually uh, first observed uh, in the year 1770 now in potato so in the year 1770 in potato a disease was first observed which was a virus disease it is called as the leaf roll disease and this was observed in england for the first time so this is uh, the virus disease which was observed and uh, then after the, the observation of this in the year 1887 next another scientist called as uh, sweeten he uh, recognized the tobacco mosaic uh, virus in holland he recognized he identified the virus which caused tobacco mosaic disease now first uh, it it was observed in 1770 so that was in potato and after observation in potato but they uh, did not study uh, about the disease that uh, leaf roll uh, what is the nature of the organism how it is caused and all that later in 1887 after a long period uh, in uh, tobacco a disease called as the tobacco mosaic disease this virus was recognized by a scientist called as a sweeten in holland and after that uh, it was another scientist in 1886 called as adolf meyer who was the first to point out that uh, these organisms means viruses they are easily transmissible and they are infectious so they cause easy infections and they can they are easily transmitted from one body to another body that was identified by another uh, scientist called as adolf uh, uh, meyer then actually in the year 1892 it was a russian scientist who was who has demonstrated the virus from bacteria now before this bacteria were already discovered and actually it was thought that all diseases were usually caused by bacteria because viruses were not known so and uh, uh, in 1770 uh, the potato roll disease Uh, which was seen in uh, this potato it was first time observed in england and it was thought to be a virus disease but uh, major discovery was not done and after that sweeten from holland he observed the tobacco mosaic virus and then 
Adolf Meyer he found that uh, the uh, this uh, uh, viruses are uh, easily infectious and easily uh, they are transmission uh, they can be easily uh, transmitted that is uh, what is seen then ivanovsky he found the difference between bacteria and virus so t- till then viruses were discovered but he uh, identified or he demonstrated the difference between bacteria and of uh, this uh, uh, virus uh, and also even from fungi so there were bacterial diseases known there were fungal diseases known after that uh, when this virus uh, was identified ivanovsky showed that this virus is different from the bacteria and fungi that uh, one uh, difference was seen so he uh, was showed that uh, the viruses can be uh, easily filtered by filter candles so bacteria they cannot pass through filter candle and even fungi also cannot pass through but viruses can pass through filter candle so that means viruses are smaller than bacteria that uh, was shown by ivanovsky now after that uh, this uh, uh, about viruses stanley so in uh, uh 1892 demetri ivanovsky russian scientist he uh, showed that viruses are smaller than bacteria and fungi and they are different from bacteria and fungi then in the year 1925 wendel stanley another scientist so in 1935 of course so he uh, isolated the viruses which caused the tobacco mosaic disease Uh, in the form of a crystal para crystalline form and showed that uh, viruses can be uh, crystallized that was uh, the next discovery of viruses by stanley then another scientists green and ladlow they showed that viruses are obligate parasites means they are compulsorily parasites they do not live freely they cannot live independent as certain organisms live that was the characteristics of viruses uh, known uh, after the discovery of uh, the viruses so but uh, uh, another uh, scientist called as bejerink in the year 1898 after ivanovsky before wendel stanley so bejerink he uh, showed that uh, uh, viruses they also pass through agar layer so ivanovsky observed that viruses they pass through candles but uh, filter candles but bejerink also showed that uh, viruses also pass through agar layer and uh, they uh, uh, bejerink called it as contagium vivum fluidum that was the name given to the virus by uh, bejerink contagium vivum fluidum but however uh, later uh, these uh, organisms were named as virus so virus means actually poison it is a greek term uh, which is which means that poison so as viruses always uh, they are parasites Uh, so they are uh, poison to the organisms plants and animals hence uh, they were named as virus and uh, uh, viruses generally what are the characteristics of virus viruses are all uh, uh, ultra microscopic in nature they are ultra microscopic uh, particles so ultra microscopic means they can be seen only under electron microscope they cannot be seen under normal microscope for example the compound microscope which we are commonly using in the lab either in the uh, uh, secondary schools uh, in the colleges so those are all compound microscopes so in the compound mi- compound microscopes we can see the cells whether it is a plant cell or a animal cell 
but viruses cannot be seen under that microscope viruses can be seen only under electron microscope because they are very small than cells cells are measured in millimicrons micrometers but viruses are measured in angstroms means uh, uh, milli microns are further divided into nanometers nanometers further divided into angstroms so angstroms is the smallest unit in measurement of the microscopic length that is viruses are very small than uh, cells and hence uh, they can be seen only under electron microscope and hence they are ultra microscopic and already uh, green and ladlo showed that they are obligate parasites so that means they are obligatory parasites they compulsory need a host on which they want to survive so without a host uh, they cannot survive or uh, means they cannot uh, reproduce and that is why they are obligatory uh, paras uh, parasites and that to they are obligatory intracellular parasites see when they are smaller than the cells they do not remain outside the cells they enter into the cell and uh, reproduce into the inside the cell that is why these uh, uh, viruses are obligatory intracellular uh, parasites and they cannot be grown in a artificial medium like bacteria as bacteria can be grown in a artificial nutrient medium containing agar so that a bacteria can be cultured and we can increase the number of the cells but viruses cannot be cultured in such kind of uh, artificial uh, nutrient media and uh, uh, already uh, St stanley wendel stanley showed that they are crystalline in nature so the, it is because of the nucleoproteins which are present of high molecular weight so they are crystalline and uh, the nucleic acids the proteins overall the nuclear nucleoproteins they are of high molecular weight and uh, so that is uh, they are crystalline in nature so that is about uh, uh, a typical uh, structure of viruses so all viruses they are made up of uh, uh, nucleic acid and proteins they are not made up of cells so they are uh, no cells are present in the virus there is no cytoplasm no nucleus no cell organelles like mitochondria golgi endoplasmic reticulum or ribosomes so a virus is made up of a protein and a nucleic acid that is the component of the virus so this uh, uh, is the uh just the uh, characteristics of virus and uh, if you come to the general characteristics of virus so about uh, what viruses uh, are and uh, uh, what are the characteristics of viruses so viruses they are ultra microscopic so viruses they are having a living and non living characters so they are peculiar group of uh, Uh, organisms but actually they are not referred as organisms they are called as living entities ultra microscopic living entities they are referred as so because of that uh, presence of living and non living characters so there is a difference of opinion about the classification of the viruses uh, whether they are to be considered as living or non living as they possess both living and non living characters so according to the uh, whitaker's classification the five kingdom classification uh, which is where the living organisms are divided into monera protista fungi plants animals viruses are not included under any kingdom they are separately studied as a separate group so virus viroids and even lichens are separately studied so this uh, virus 
they are considered as living organisms according to some taxonomists some of them they classify viruses and bacteria in a particular group so like that uh, viruses are classified according to their own characters so whatever it is when we come to the characteristics of viruses they possess both living and non living characters so the living and non living characters living characters just to mention here so living characters means viruses are made up of nucleic acid dna rna so because of the presence of dna rna they are considered as living because wherever nucleic acid is there wherever this dna rna is there that part that material exhibits living nature living characteristics so because of the presence of dna and rna or rna so viruses are considered as living and viruses they reproduce inside the living cells so viruses when they are uh, inside living cells they reproduce so uh, however there is no growth of growth seen in viruses because of the phenomenon of reproduction because of the reproducing nature viruses are considered as living because uh, basically we know that growth and reproduction is the basic uh, characteristics of living organisms so whenever we call anything or any material or any object what we see if there is growth and reproduction it is living so but viruses they reproduce however in inside living cells so they are uh, having such living characters then viruses they respond they they are sensitive to cold and heat so whenever there is heat and there is cold they respond to that change in the temperature and that is why they are considered as living by these characters so this is uh, the living characters of viruses now if you take the non living characters viruses are not made up of cells viruses they are not having cells only protein and nucleic acid so because of the absence of cells they are non living and uh, other characters when we see viruses remain as inert particles outside living cells so when a virus does not come in contact with a living cell it remains as a inert particle so it remains as a dead particle so hence because of this nature viruses are non living but however when the same virus comes in contact with the living cell it enters into the living cell and cause or uh, uh, bring about or exhibit reproduction in the cell that is living character so when it is outside living cell uh, it is not in contact with the living cell it is uh, it remains as inert particle it remains as inert particle hence it is non living and also viruses can be stored as chemicals in bottles so viruses which are taken from an organism when they are put in a bottle and uh, closed air tight and uh, kept for uh, a long period and uh, we believe that the viruses they die inside the bottle when we remove and take the viruses and uh, make them in contact with the living cells they start reproducing so that means they can be stored as chemicals in bottles for a long period that is also another non living character of the virus so these are some uh, uh, general characteristics of virus uh, which uh, we can uh, mention now how the replication of virus takes place what is the replication of virus so replication of virus means the increase in the amount of uh, dna or rna so virus replication it is the formation of uh, new viruses biological viruses uh, during the 
infection process in the target host cells so when a virus enters into the cell of a host of a target host it will enter into a cell and reproduce to produ uh, reproduce to form many viruses so virus particles and uh, these virus particles uh, again they come in contact with the neighboring cells and again further uh, increase in number uh, by infecting the neighboring cells and uh, so virus when it wants to reproduce or uh, undergo replication of its dna or rna it has to first come in contact with the cell before replication so then uh, the viruses uh, which uh, comes in contact then the uh, dna and rna will uh, increase uh, and the viruses multiply in number only inside living cells so the uh, increase in the number of the viruses is uh, due to the supply of the energy by the host cell so the virus into which the virus uh, which has entered into a particular host cell so that cell will provide the energy and whatever uh, machinery which is necessary for the uh, development of the new viruses that is provided and uh, 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 that is how the replication occurs now this replication occurs in uh, seven steps or seven stages which we can simply mention uh, one by one so first uh, the virus has to attach to the uh, cell now suppose this is a cell host cell and uh, this is the virus so the virus is very small when we compare to the cell so the first cell is the attachment of the virus to the uh, host cell and particularly to the cell membrane suppose if it is animal cell it will come in contact with the cell membrane suppose if it is a plant cell it will come in contact with the cell wall so that we call it as adsorption so attaching of the virus to the cell membrane of the host cell then what happens it will send its uh, dna or rna into the host cell to initiate the infection that is uh, what happens in the adsorption now in uh, animal cells this uh, entry of the virus is by a process called as endocytosis so that means here what happens this cell membrane will form a depression like this now after the uh, cell membrane forms an uh, depression or invagination we can say so it invaginates it grows inside as a depression so the virus particle is enclosed in this in this invagination and gradually it gets separated from the cell membrane like this this is called as uh, pinocytotic vesicle it is called as that is how the virus will entry enter into the cell so in some cases only the dna or rna is injected or it is a sent inside but in uh, uh, certain cases especially in animal cells where there is no cell wall directly the cell membrane comes in contact with the virus the virus comes in contact with the cell membrane so the cell membrane invaginates means grows inside as a groove or constriction into which the virus is en enclosed and it gets separated into a vesicle called as the pinocytotic vesicle 
that is the second step how the entry of the virus takes place into the cell then the virus it is surrounded by the protein so in the third step the protein is removed which we call it call it as uncoating so coat means cover so that cover is removed by the enzymes of the cell so the enzymes of the cell uh, especially from the lysosomes which are called as hydrolytic enzymes so they uh, strip or they separate the protein cover of the virus and uh, the nucleic acid which is a dna or rna it is released into the cell that is the third step which is called as uncoating now in the fourth step uh, the dna rna uh, undergoes the replication now this uh, uh, dna rna is either by uh, production of m rna or sometimes by a process called as a transcription so this existing dna or rna will increase in quantity by the mrna or transcription and also then another process called as translation that is uh, the fourth step transcription which is increasing the uh, amount of nucleic uh, acid then in the fifth step uh, the virus gets its uh, components synthesized in the fifth step so using the host material using the organelles which are existing in the host cell so the proteins of the virus and the nucleic acid are synthesized so the virus proteins the proteins of the virus the nucleic acid of the virus are synthesized using the uh, materials from the cell or the cell organelles uh, the existing organelles so that is the fifth step where the components of the virus uh, which are to be formed uh, they are uh, synthesized then in the sixth step uh, these nucleic acids molecules which are newly formed and the proteins they get uh, arranged or there is a uh, uh, assembling of the proteins and the nucleic acids to form new particles so to form uh, new virus so this uh, virus uh, which is newly formed by the assemblage of the protein and the nucleic acid is called as virion so the virion is an uh, active or uh, intact virus particle which is uh, seen in the uh, cell or the host cell that is the sixth step the last step the seventh step so when the uh, virus particles are formed by the assemblage of the proteins and nucleic acids so these virus particles are released uh, that uh, liberation stage they are liberated they are released uh, from the cell now this uh, release of the new viruses or the newly formed viruses they are released either by the breakage of the cell by the rupture of the cell or even by the uh, the through the cell membrane so without rupture the virus particles they gradually uh, undergo uh, extrusion so extrusion means moving out so there is gradual extrusion uh, from the uh, cell uh, through the cell membrane so without uh, rupturing of the cell the virus particles pass through the cell membrane in other words or else in some cases uh, due to the formation of the viral particles uh, there is pressure developed within the cell and uh, at this stage the cell is almost empty because the cell machinery or the uh, materials of the existing organelles are used up to synthesize the proteins and nucleic acids of the virus so that is 
why a pressure is developed into the cell due to the development of uh, virus particles and because of that uh, the uh, host cell gets burst and uh, thus due to the rupture of the cell wall or the cell the viral particles are uh, released and those are the seven steps which are seen in the uh, this uh, virus now next uh, coming to the structure of a dna virus and rna virus and again viruses are host specific means they are specific to a particular host so they are obligatory parasites we say means compulsorily they require a host which uh, uh, lives on them as a parasite but in addition to that uh, they are also host specific a particular virus living in a host uh, cannot live in another species of host that is the meaning that is why they are host specific now viruses are classified uh, based on their uh, host based on the type of the nucleic acid uh, for example uh, based on the uh, host uh, based on the nucleic acid if you take uh, viruses contain either dna or rna viruses are made up of nucleic acid and protein when we say nucleic acid it is either dna or rna both are not present so based on which nucleic acid is present so viruses are classified into dna virus and rna virus so almost all animal viruses are dna viruses all plant viruses are rna viruses so based on the type of the host again there are uh, three types of viruses on what type of host they are present whether they are present in plant whether they are present in animal cells or whether they are present in bacterial cells so plant cell is the host animal cell is the host bacterial cell is the host <coughs> now if uh, the host is the plant cell or it is a plant it is plant virus if the host is animal animal cell it is animal virus if the host is bacteria it is bacterial virus or bacteriophage suppose this is bacteria this is the virus it feeds on bacteria it is bacteriophage so this uh, bacteriophage is also called as only phage so only the word phage is used for this so uh, uh, as i have said that uh, viruses are host specific so viruses which are living in animals they live only in animals they reproduce only in animals but not in plants followed and viruses which are living in bacteria they live only in bacteria they are bacterial they are specific to bacteria followed and viruses which are specific to plant suppose if they are removed and put into animals they will not reproduce viruses which are living in animals and removed and placed in plant cell they do not reproduce similarly viruses which are living in bacteria and removed and put in animal cell and plant cell they do not reproduce they remain inert so that means they are host specific they are specific to a host so bacteriophages or bacterial virus they are viruses which uh, feed on bacteria or uh, which reproduce in bacteria the bacterial cells are the host the bacterial cell is the host for these viruses so bacteriophages are also called as only phages now these uh, bacteriophages were actually discovered by a scientist called as tort so bacterial phages were discovered previously when viruses were identified it was thought that only there are two types of viruses plant virus and animal virus 
but later it was also known that there are also viruses which are uh, depending on bacterial cells the host is the bacterial cell so that is why uh, tort discovered the bacteriophage and again under bacteriophage based on their uh, na uh, structure uh, shape and all that uh, there are different types of phages so there are different types of phages now these phages are named as t1 phage t2 phage t3 phage t4 phage so on so here t indicates tort so it is the uh, abbreviation of the scientist which is designated as a t so t phage t phages are they are also called as a t phages so t phages means bacteriophage so these t phages are of various kinds like t1 phage t2 phage t3 phage t4 phage t5 phage t6 and so so on there are many more types of t phages so these t phages are found in bacteria and Uh, these uh, bacteria uh, they are called as bac- bacteriophages or only phages uh, which are named as t1 t2 and so on so if we take a typical t4 phage bacteria uh, t4 phage virus t4 phage so this is a virus which is uh, tadpole shape having a head like this this is the nature of the virus and uh, so this is the head protein the protein coat or the total the virus is having a tadpole shape it is having a head and a tail now this uh, virus especially t4 phage which lives in a bacteria called as e coli bacteria escherichia coli this bacteria is a uh, typical bacteria where uh, it is a uh, more complex form of virus and it is used as a genetic tool uh, for ge- studies of uh, genetics so the uh, t4 phage uh, is having a head and a tail now this uh, head is somewhat uh, six sided on all sides equal that is why it is called as icos uh, icos icosa hedron so that means uh, uh, it is uh, having a six sided and this is about uh, uh, this uh, head region is about 1250 Uh, angstroms in length that is the length of the head which is uh, in seen in t4 and if you uh, see the width of this head it is 850 angstroms that is the width of the head region then uh, if you come to the other parts so the protein uh, of this head this is a protein coat this is the tail so this protein coat which is uh, covering the head region so this is uh, made up of about uh, uh, 2000 units protein units so these protein units are similar type they are all similar so there are about 2000 uh, similar protein units uh, which are present in the head region and the tail is attached by short neck so there is a short neck here and also uh, this uh, neck region is having a small ring like structure which is referred as the uh, collar of course it is protein so there is a small ring like structure which is referred as the collar and there is a short neck and below this neck you will be having the tail and the tail is uh, having a hexagonal base so that means it is having a six sided like this so hexagonal base is present in the head region and this uh, uh, hexagonal base is just like a plate at the base of the tail 
so that tail is attached to the inner uh, cylinder so inner uh, there is a core cylinder here like this which is also protein uh, that is attached to the inner uh, core cylinder or which is hollow cylinder uh, of that uh, tail now around this uh, uh, center the protein which is present so this uh, tail is also made up of protein and this is having about uh, 144 uh, subunits of protein so as the head is large so the tail uh, is uh, small is not uh, uh, long as that of the one and though it even if it is long it is not broader as that of the head so almost the head and the tail are equal in size almost but the tail is having only 144 units because of its uh, the diameter or the width is very less but the width of the head is 850 but uh, in that of the tail it is very less uh, than 100 or so hence it is having only about 144 uh, subunits and uh, uh, here uh, the uh, cylinder hollow cylinder which contains about uh, uh, so 144 units so it con uh, it contains uh, about uh, uh, six rays uh, of uh, uh, what are uh, six subunits each about 24 rays actually are present of uh, proteins so the, and also uh, at the base there are about uh, uh, small projected structure which are called as spikes so these are called as spikes so there are about uh, six spikes so as the basal plate is hexagonal in shape so be because of that uh, the hexagonal six sides so from each side uh, there is a small uh, projection like a spike so they are called as the spikes uh, itself so there are about uh, uh, six uh, spikes which are very short not so long and uh, also from each uh, side there are some uh, uh, long uh, structures which are fiber like structures like this so these are six in number so these are called as uh, tail fibers so this is a tail fiber so these uh, spikes are many six tail fibers are also six so the difference is the spikes are small short but whereas tail is long so these uh, tail uh, of the this uh, phage that is the t4 phage or any this uh, phage it helps for the attachment to the host uh, cell so whenever the bacteriophage or this phage comes in contact with the living cell the fibers will help in attachment to that cell membrane or the cell wall uh, cell cell wall itself because bacteria are having cell wall so that uh, fibers will help in the attachment to the cell wall and that is the function of the this uh, uh, tail fibers and inside the head we find a DNA molecule which is spirally called like this so this is the DNA molecule which is uh, double stranded DNA so DNA uh, is a double stranded and again uh, here uh, about the DNA and RNA one point we should remember so there are also viruses which are having single stranded DNA double stranded DNA there are also viruses which are having uh, uh, having single stranded RNA double stranded RNA so that is another classification when we uh, come across in the virus so that is about uh, the structure of the T4 uh, phage so this uh, uh, is how the uh, structure of the T4 phage now in the next part we have to study how the viruses reproduce 
in what way they reproduce and uh, uh, how they uh, reproduce uh, that there are two uh, steps important uh, cycles which are called as the lytic cycle and the lysogenic cycle the has to how they uh, reproduce so that is about the uh, replication of the virus and the structure of the phage so viruses uh, they are uh, ultra microscopic in nature they are measured only in the terms of uh, angstroms not in uh, uh, microns or millimicrons because uh, cells are measured in millimicrons but viruses are minute they can easily uh, some of them can easily pass through cell membranes and enter into the cell but uh, there are certain uh, like uh, phages which cannot enter into the cell they attach to the uh, cell or wall and only the uh, nucleic acid will enter into the uh, host cell and uh, undergoes the replication and increase the number of uh, viruses so that is about uh, the structure of the uh, virus uh, dna virus so then we shall study about how the uh, viruses they reproduce by lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle